Hey guys, I'm gonna be celebrating the worldwide release of Bang Dream Girls Band Party on my channel with a top 10 list. And this top 10 list is pretty much the 10 reasons why you or anyone should play this game. There's plenty of fantastic reasons, but I've narrowed it down to my top 10, my personal top 10 as to why I started playing the game, and I think there are good enough reasons why you should start playing the game too. Now this is probably the first of a few top 10 lists, probably both for Bang Dream and Love Live, so if you do have any suggestions for any kind of lists in the future, do leave it in the comments and I'll look at it. I do have a few already planned, but I'm always looking for new ideas. Starting off our list at number 10, we have the language. One of the main reasons why a lot of people never try a game is because of the language barrier. There are many fantastic Japanese mobile games out there that never get translated, so it's hard for Western fans to fully enjoy what the game has to offer. With the release of Girls Band Party in English, a lot of fans of rhythm games and idol games alike will pick up the game to see what the hype is all about. The game being in English is definitely a major drawing point for a lot of people. But for me, since I'm pretty much fluent in Japanese for the most part, it will be interesting for me at least to see how Craft Egg decides to translate some of these particular stories. Nevertheless, it's very exciting to get another Japanese music game to be released in English, so I'm very looking forward to it. Number 9 is going to be about the graphics. They say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but the graphics of a game are a defining feature for many people when deciding if a game is good or not. In Girls Band Party, the graphics are very colorful and vibrant. The world map has a very cute style that mixes chibi characters with the live 2D models in the stories. When playing a song, the graphics are never obstructive. The pop-ups are in the background and not the foreground, so they rarely hinder your ability to play. Although there aren't 3D dances in the game, it honestly doesn't need them. Since Girls Band Party is a band game and not an idol game, which is something I will probably emphasize over and over again, the focus is more on the music rather than the performance of the characters. So the bouncing and spinning chibis coupled with the raving fans in the background is enough to accomplish that immersion. Finally, they recently added plenty of customization options so you can change them to your liking. For number 8, I'm going to be talking about one of the main features of the game, and that's going to be the co-op. At first glance, a rhythm game with its core gameplay being co-op based seems rather gimmicky, but it's actually implemented in a very smart way. First and most importantly, co-op is optional. I hate games that force you to play co-op when I would much rather do something on my own, but in this game, it's optional, and despite that, I would much rather play co-op than being on my own, just because of the benefits that it provides, both for gameplay as well as efficiency. Another positive for co-op is the ability to play with friends anytime you want. Unlike other rhythm games that only allow co-op play during certain events, Girls Band Party always has that option. You can make a lobby and give your friends a join code, or easily join an existing lobby. Finally, if you don't have any friends available to play, you can match up with random people. This can provide a mixed experience, but most of the random matches I play end up pretty well. For number 7, we're going to be talking about the events in the game, and for the most part they're pretty casual, which I think is actually a very good thing. In Girls Band Party, you don't actually have to tier to get the event card. Once you reach enough event points, you are rewarded with the event card just like that. Tearing is mainly for the hardcore players who want to earn the cosmetic rewards or skill up tickets. It's not even that hard to get enough event points for the card either. As long as you play consistently every day and use all your fires efficiently, you can easily get enough event points. It's a nice change of pace from a lot of other games that incentivize tearing with those event cards. You no longer have to stay up until 4am waiting for the event to end. Number 6 is going to be about the characters. There are 5 bands in this game, with 5 members in each band, for a total of 25 main characters. Despite this, all the characters have unique personalities and traits that are very interesting to learn about. Each of the 5 bands has their own kind of identity or motif, which is further shaped by the characters in the band, the stories in the game, 
and the character interactions in the world map as well as during songs. Characters mainly interact within their own band, but certain characters have interactions with those in other bands. After playing for a year, I still don't know every single character interaction, and whenever I learn about a new one, it's always a pleasant surprise. Moving on to our top 5 now, for the 5th spot, it's gotta be the Gotcha Raid. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of games with ridiculously low chances of getting the highest rarity card. In Girls Band Party, the highest rarity is a 4 star card, which actually started at 1.5%, but for the game's anniversary, they permanently increased this to 3%. There's also a special Dream Festival event where they doubled the rate again for a very generous 6% chance for the 4 star cards, but only if you use paid stars to do that. So if you're an unlucky whale, uh, you can take advantage of these opportunities, and there's even special boxes where you can get a guaranteed 4 star with your paid stars. And quite recently, there was this Dream Festival ticket where you could scout for your paid stars and then get a selection ticket which would allow you to pick any 4 star card in the game that wasn't limited of course, just like that. So it was very easy to get good cards in this game, so that's another positive overall. For fourth spot, it's gotta be the gameplay. A little known fact about me is that I actually hate rhythm games. The only reason I started playing School Idol Festival was number one, because it was a love life game, and number two, it was easy to start playing despite not having any rhythm game experience. Girls Band Party, in my opinion, offers that similar gameplay of easy to get into but really hard to master. It allows for new players to get comfortable with the game, learn the mechanics and the controls, while also presenting veterans with challenging beat maps that are very satisfying to play and try to full combo. The beat maps also match the songs extremely well, so it actually feels like it's a rhythm game rather than just a music game where you just happen to tap notes along to the beat. We're finally at our top three, and these are the three reasons that I pretty much started playing Bang Dream Girls Band Party. So reason number three is going to be the songs. You can make the best rhythm game in the world, but if the songs are bad, then no one would play it. I can say with confidence that the songs in Girls Band Party are of exceptional quality. The songs are about 60% original songs and 40% cover songs. And if you didn't know, uh, a cover song is pretty much songs from other franchises, but sung by the cast of Bang Dream. The cover songs were certainly one of the main reasons I started playing the game, since I had no knowledge of the Bang Dream series. But after listening to these cover songs, I became more interested in their original songs. For a lot of people, I'm sure it'll be the same for them. They'll start playing due to a particular cover song, but they will eventually learn to love the original songs as well. Reason number two is going to be the nostalgia. This might not apply to a lot of you, but it's a very important point for me. Back in the mid to late 2000s, there was a particular music game that was all the rage. That game, of course, is Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero was perhaps one of the most influential music games of its time. It involved using a giant guitar controller to tap the notes to the beat of the song. This led to another game of the same nature known as Rock Band. In Rock Band, you would get together with four other friends to form a band of vocals, guitar, bass, drums, and keyboard. It would be foolish to ignore the huge influence that these games had in the creation of Girls Band Party. The premise of Girls Band Party is pretty much the same, except instead of using instrument controllers, we play with the convenience of our smartphones. The layout of Girls Band Party definitely takes inspiration from its predecessors using a very similar 7-lane setup instead of the 5-lane setup that Guitar Hero is so famous for. I would have never thought that I would be playing Japanese Guitar Hero with waifus on my phone in the year 2018, but here we are today and what a world and what a time to be alive. We finally reached the number one reason and 
and it might be pretty obvious, but it is going to be the no stamina system. This is perhaps the most significant reason of all, and the fact that you can play the game as much as you want is a huge deal. All the other gacha rhythm games have this stamina system where you have to spend stamina to play a song. When you run out of stamina, you either have to refill using the game's currency or wait until you have more. Otherwise, you don't get to play. In Girls Band Party, no such restriction exists. I can play any song I have unlocked at any time. I can play a difficult beat map over and over again to get good at a particular part. I don't have to use some third-party app or some website to practice playing the game. Granted, of course, there is another system known as Fire or Live Boost in the English version. When you play a song and you use the Live Boost, you get multipliers for your event points, item drops, and experience. To play the game efficiently, you always have to consider your Live Boost usage but the main point here is that the Live Boost system rewards the player for playing efficiently rather than punishing the player by not letting them play at all if they don't have any to use. So that'll do it for my top 10 list for why to play Girls Band Party. It's my first time doing something like this, so hopefully it doesn't sound too off or I didn't miss anything too major, but if you do have an opinion as to something that might belong on this list, do leave it in the comments. I would love to hear why you play this game or what you're looking forward to when playing. Other than that, I think I have an urge to keep playing right now because I swear, one of these days I'm gonna I'm gonna full combo with this song with thumbs.